So, yeah, getting right into this thing, how would you describe what exactly it is that you do? You know, everything that we see on YouTube, and if you want to get into anything else about your work, uh, feel free. So, first of all, I am someone who was always searching freedom right from a very early age in whatever way I could. And um, that led me to really, um, like I wanted to, I knew that we are true. I knew that our nature is free and that we are here to, we are, we are free, we're free beings. And I just couldn't, um, I couldn't understand why we're all living in a world where we're being told like, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you can't you know, like squeeze into this box. And I was rebelling against that very early. And um, yeah, so I've kind of dropped out of the normal steps of, you know, leaving school, getting exams, going for the, climbing up the ladder, da, da, da. I just kind of dropped out and left the country and just went. And I wouldn't say it was like a, a conscious search of freedom, but looking back, I know that that was it for me. It was like the ultimate, that's what I, I need to be free. I need to live freedom. So that was a long journey to come to really true freedom because there's lots of, you know, expressions of relative freedom along the way. And um, realizing true freedom really was really something else and i knew when true freedom revealed itself that this is it this is what this life has always been for me and this this is everybody's birthright mm. uh, yeah and this is like uh, you know i, I want to shout from the rooftops this is just like yes and um Organically, I was led into um, working with people, cut a long story short, and um, it's, if I boil it all down, I, you know, I can say a lot of non-dual conceptual words and put it in boxes and say that it's, you know, I liberate suffering, I help facilitate, liberate suffering through true self-recognition, self-inquiry, direct realization, I can say all those things, but many people won't even know really, truly what I mean by that. They'll know what they understand of that. So um, if you boil it all down to what anybody can understand, I help, support, facilitate, assist, transmit, and guide people to break free mm. in every area, in all areas of life, including ultimately realizing who they really are. So I don't know if that. Yeah. That definitely answered it. That's powerful. <laughs> freedom is priceless. Yeah. True freedom. So let me ask you this one. How would you describe the difference between true freedom and these other relative freedoms that we find along the way? How did you recognize it, maybe, that it was different than the other relative freedoms? Well, that's pretty easy for me to answer. It's I was sitting in a jail. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, you didn't know that? No. Oh, okay. So I woke up in a Japanese prison. You know, I mean, really woke up, really realized um, after a lot of suffering, extreme suffering, probably for about coming up for two years, year and a half, two years, solitary confined, um, an experience completely and utterly changed everything about everything. And um, true freedom revealed itself 
as my own nature. So if I put that into what does that actually look like? Um, after this uh, kind of, because if I use words like I say dropping through the veils and like a deep dropping into pain and then a, a, a breaking through and a breaking open into the cosmos, whatever, you know, yeah how to put it in words um after that moment and i could describe all of that moment but it's not really about that um everything was different i was just dropped into the moment there was no more suffering about how counting the days or months or years that it might take to get out i was just dropped into the moment and i was still being screamed at i was still solitary confined I was still not knowing when I'd ever get out of there and yet there was a smile inside that nothing could take uh, yeah. and that was mine that was mine and nothing could take it everything had been taken everything relatively had been taken and this could not be taken mm. and the moment that I recognized I had something nothing could touch then that got more and more and more of a deep smile inside and revealed itself more and more. Hmm. That's quite poetic. Yeah, so it was pretty easy for me to recognize the difference because it wasn't dependent on any experience that comes and goes. Yeah. Finding freedom in prison. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of... I'm surprised you didn't know that story um, because it's it's kind of, you know, the story that's around my uh, thing, mm. um, finding freedom in jail. Mm. Talked about it a lot, talked about it on interviews and all that stuff because it was a long time ago, you know, I was released from there in 1997. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Until that point, freedom looked like wild, wild and free, you know? Yeah. Wow. That's so, like, the symbolism in there is just so succinct, right? The inner smile, that inner freedom despite the outside circumstances. Would you say that's the essence of this? freedom is no matter the coming or going of the drama of our lives there is that inner knowing that inner freedom that nothing can really touch yes i mean that still life goes on and there can be pain and there can be experience of extreme difficulty there there will be experiences of loss grief possibly being hurt on other levels. And yet this, this knowing, this recognition, this um, recognition mm. of one's true self changes everything about how everything else is experienced. So there is a more of um, more freedom to meet what is here in the knowing that it is a come and a go. Every experience is a come and a go. And what, what's not coming and going, that, that can never be hurt, can never be taken, is not growing old, is not, cannot die, doesn't die. Just the recognition of this kind of puts, it's, it's you know, it's, unless it's valued, it's overlooked. And it puts them, um, for myself, it kind of makes it clear that the whole of life has been about realizing this. And, you know, if you get to the end of the deathbed, if you get onto the deathbed at the end of the life, and you don't know this, there can be immense fear, yeah. attachment, regrets, longings, all of that stuff that will pass through you know, the Bardos that will pass through. And if you don't really know who you are, 
you're easily taken into the next grasping. Mm, yeah. And if, if we look at that in the, at the end of the life, we can see how that works on a daily basis as well. I just swept along, you're saying? No, like on a daily basis. Yeah, we're we swept grasp. along in the day-to-day -day stuff. And we grasp at the yeah, stuff. Yeah, taken by the next, taken by, you know, like the stories that come and go, the all yeah. of the challenges that come and go that appear to be the, the reality and easily taken into a whole nother life cycle. Mm. If you're not able to just let it go, to just... Let to die, to die to the grasping. Mm. To die before you die. Yeah, ego death. Yeah. Powerful stuff. Yeah. This seems to be the essence of um, this whole thing, if you want to call it a thing. But for many other people I've spoken to, and also in my personal experiences, to almost simulate dying. And come out the yes. other side. Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, when I said that this doesn't, this can't die. Right? Yeah. There is something that dies. And the dying of this life story, the whole life story and this body, of course, which is the life story, that comes to an end. And if we can die in our daily life to that life story we can actually really truly live yep you know dying to live dying to live yeah yeah i feel that um a lot of my work is is about that is helping people to, to die to, for to be able to live mm. mm -hmm. that's freedom yeah. yeah, dying yeah. to be free. Yeah. Now, how do you suppose we go about doing this? Is this through self-inquiry, meditative practices, uh, things of that nature, being still? Self-inquiry is the fast track. Yeah, as far as I, that's how I work with people is through self-inquiry, direct self-inquiry. And I find that, you know, within... Well, if I'm working with people within retreats and meetings and stuff, I might spend 10, 15 minutes, maybe half an hour max with them. And through asking the right questions so that they can shift their perspective to see from freedom, like I will just ask them questions so that they have to look from the place in them that is already free and a recognition of who am I comes in and um, is very fast. It's like uh, just to directly inquire into who am I through direct inquiry, like as a direct experience, not as an understanding, not as a concept, not as a, but really truly see what is it that sits here on the chair right now and is knowing that sensation of where my ass touches the seat, where that's very alive right now. And this is the direct experience of this moment. It's alive. It's never happened before. It will never happen again quite like this. And let's go here and look here and keep looking here and keep looking here as to the experiencer of this moment and to penetrate the question, who am I? Just through asking the right questions, bang, it opens and recognition happens. And the same one is looking to itself and back at itself, seeing through the all-seeing eye. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, we can start to really see, oh, okay, now all the stuff that's going on in my life, the stories, the patterning, the conditionings, blah, 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 it can be seen from here. And when it's seen from here, it's easy to see where I'm holding on, where I'm fighting for my rights, where I'm getting in my own way, 
and where I'm being invited and called to let go. Where I can give up a little, little more. And in that giving up, in that letting go, there is a dying of those energies that grasp. And thus, with less grasping, there is less suffering or is the suffering different? Are we able to see our suffering different? Is that what freedom also entails? Is that we don't suffer anymore or we don't create our own suffering anymore? Well, um, I would say that um, the recognition can only, it can take just a moment. It can happen so fast. But the undoing of all of that conditioning where the grasping is happening and the controlling and the fear, that doesn't just fall away in a moment. Mm -hmm. That's going to take time to undo. It took time to wind up. It will take time to undo. Mm. So, but in that seeing, in, in the seeing of where the holding on is, there can now be a true meeting. So when the holding on and the struggling, resisting experience and trying to control or the fear or whatever, all of that ball of energy is happening in the body mind, which is where it happens, then from this clear seeing, there can be an entering into this experience and presenting, like being fully in it, fully awake to who you really are, meeting it, directly experiencing it without following the mind story that is um, keeping the thing going. So it's, it's now being met. And normally, it all leads back to core wounding, you know, like the, um, the momentum to keep that going, usually leads back to core wound. So, you know, if you just ask a few of the right questions, then it leads back to unworthiness, not feeling good enough, or these identifications with a deep feeling, sense of not being enough in this world, or a sense of um, a lack of trust, or feeling like you don't belong here, or the wounding that's in those, that early patterning, it will lead back to there and then going and actually meeting that in a way to feel those feelings directly and intimately from who you really are. So there's pure presence and awareness right in the midst of this experiencing really with, like I call it, the true meeting, which brings, in a way you could call it healing, because it's like the, the child has at some point identified with one of those core beliefs as an identity. The world is like, for example, let's use an example. The parents are way too busy. They're not even noticing me. That must mean I'm not worthy mm. as an example. So there's, all, there's going to be in the process of the crystallization of egoic identification, there's going to be an interpretation of the environment and what that means about me, 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 which is coming in at around three, four years old, when the identification with a name is taken, then this is who I am and nobody's taken any notice of me, so it must mean that I'm not worthy. And then some kind of behaviors in response to that to either withdraw or either prove that I'm worthy or get attention or go and hide in the corner. These behaviors that begin and get built upon in the nervous system to create a character that will display those, those, um, uh, that patterning within relationships and in the world and in everything that's interacted with. Mm. So this, for this to come undone, that wounding will need to be met in truth you know so in the true meeting there is the becoming aware of what was really needed in that child energy 
at that moment in time? What was the thing that was actually needed, which of course was presence and loving presence. And to become the loving presence in which this energy is welcomed, welcomed home, allowed to be here fully, not pushed away, not denied like, oh, this is just not who I am and I'm going to be pure awareness. Like, not to kind of separate from that as if it's, just, oh, that's all illusion and just push it away. But to actually open for that energy that's in the body mind to return home in this loving presence of who one truly is and to, to allow that to come home and, and therefore it, it's met. And that's really truly what is needed is the meeting itself to be mm. met. Mm -hmm. And then that subsiding, then it's like um, any time it plays out, it's recognized for what it is, and it doesn't need to take a life, as in keep on with the same program of trying to get attention because I feel I'm not worthy, or withdrawing because I'm not worthy, or all of those behaviors will, will come slowly but surely back to more space more space for being who you really are mm -hmm. and then you know when you can be who you really are this is where your your true gift can can come into your expression yeah that was very well said i'm just gonna sit with that one take a breath that was very well said yeah let's take a breath <laughs> <laughs> take a breath let that in let's take let a sip that of tea in. on that one yeah let's let that in it needs to be really just like <sighs> Ah, take it in. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. So I want to actually go off the note of what you said about once we do sort through our childhood wounding, we can become the expression from where we really are or who we really are or what we really are, however you yeah. want to explain it. Yeah. Does this expression of the true self, have some kind of i don't know archetype attached to it like service or compassion or more cooperation with one another is there like a just a natural effortless yeah service that comes from it like once you see it you kind of have to give back a little bit yeah yeah i i would say that if there is really truly profound recognition and transformation you know and this really comes from the valuing of this over everything else yeah um then coming with that is like an immense gratitude for everything that's ever happened in the life that brought you to this point and um quite naturally the wanting the well i can't speak for every every everyone you know but I can speak in my own case and what I observe in many who come through my uh, field, um, that there is naturally really a calling to align their work, their relationships, their life with this truth. Yeah. Yeah. And some that might take the expression of serving others, the world, or even animals, or um, just being with the nature, or anything. You know, it doesn't look like anything, but it's just what is true for each one. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I feel that. Because, I don't know, what else is there left to do, right? We definitely still have to do the humanly stuff, do the dishes, do the laundry. Yeah. Eat. Pity, but we do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. But it's like, what better use of my time here could there be than hopefully spreading the good word, right? Yeah. Even if it just helps one person, I feel as though it's a noble and honorable pursuit while I'm here. So it's like, how can I not? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. And it's not from like an grandiose point of view it's not from like i want to be the savior it's just like out of love it's out of like 
I just want to do what I can to help here as much as I can. And you probably feel the same, right? It's like, we're not here forever. Well, I mean, depending on how you look at it, but in your form of Ananta, yeah. you know, you're not here forever. We have a temporary amount of time here and I don't see any other way to use my time here than to serve the others that aren't really the others. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, another, yeah, yes, it's beautiful. And another way to also say it is that we're really not truly free until everybody's free. Exactly. Because we are one consciousness, you know, yeah. so as long as there's suffering in the world, this that's still in our consciousness. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's the Bodhisattva. Yeah. 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 It's that simple. And, um, thing is is we can't do it for anybody though right we save ourselves to save the world <laughs> that's it that's it we cannot and uh, everybody's in the each one in their unique process and yeah. has to go through the journey it's there's no shortcut you've got to live through your own you know i wouldn't say suffering but karmic play or mm. the journey that that helps you to not just to realize, but to, to value what you realize. Yeah. Because if you, know, if you showed this to a 12 year old, for example, they would just look at you like, yeah, so what? I've got things to do here. I've got things to play, you know? Yeah. So the, the desire body has to be lived out mm. For to look here, find out, oh, that's not it. This is not it, not there, not here. And come to a place of real readiness to say, okay, I've looked under every cushion, you know, and it's not there. And yeah, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. There it is. Yeah. Now, do you say that is in some way what our suffering or desire body as you described it is for is to be like a giant lesson to wake us up and lead us to a point of there's got to be another way right uh, like a point of um exhaustion yes well yeah. it, it was in my case yeah that's all i can say and but i know of people who didn't go through suffering you know yeah. I've heard mm. of people who just naturally came to this. Mm. And, yeah. I, and I feel that because we each have a unique journey, then we each have a unique um, expression after we re self realize there's something you so unique to offer and share, even though it's the same message. Mm -hmm. It's very, very unique, you know. In my own case, I came through a lot of challenges. Um, and so I, I can really work with people who are very challenged, you know. Mm. I've been through a lot of that stuff, so I understand it. I've been there, and um, I, know, I know the difficulty, so I know them in my body. I know... When I'm working, I know when they describe it, I've been there, I know it. So for someone else who's had a different journey, they'll work with different people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Mm. We're all our own Buddha. Yeah. It's all the same truth, but how it comes about is unique. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah, how this is like the miracle on top of the miracle on top of the miracle. Yeah, that God for for just to use a word, not that there's a a guy in the sky, but you know that which um, expresses itself through these forms um, has expressed itself through such uniqueness. No two the same with a unique journey, with a unique message, all singing the same song, yet in their own unique way. I mean, just that in itself is miraculous. Mm -hmm. yeah? 
So mm. if that doesn't blow your mind, just as simple mm. as that, to recognize that, if that's not already enough to blow your mind, you know, because what is also really, really mind blowing, I find, is that so many can walk through this life right to the end and not, not recognize the miracle. Yeah, I know, right? I know. And that's not from an arrogant point of view, right? It's not from no. a judgmental point of view. No. Yeah. Yeah, I, just, I don't get it personally. Um, how is that possible you know but that's that's the power of of what i'm calling god i like this word but i mean the godliness of the essence of being mm -hmm. has been able to even put itself so unconscious that it can completely forget itself yeah right yeah. that's extremely powerful yeah yeah wow do you think though even if the most dense and ignorant people coming from a non-judgmental view, they still have that inkling of hope, maybe. Like it's available for all of us. Every single human being is, if they really want, if the suffering and desire has been exhausted enough that we're all able to become God-realized, I do feel it's possible for anybody. Mm. However, whether that will ever emerge, possibly not as a desire, or maybe that will just be, become a happening, can never know. And perhaps many will go to the end of the life. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Buddhist uh, concepts, but like you reincarnation. Know, karma you know they talk about evolving through lives and being born with a desire mm -hmm. to be free right so perhaps if there are if there's soul journeys that some have to go through a life to come to the end to really really on the deathbed be beginning the longing for freedom like really like what was this life all about and then the longing to know and perhaps that takes the next birth, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what the Buddhists have. Um, that's their, their concept. And I, I, don't, I don't feel to argue with it. Um, <laughs> because it is, it is so that some, some of us just very early are naturally with that desire and some are right to the end of the life and, you know, at the end, just in total despair and not even yet longing to be, like longing to be uh, free from suffering, but no it's still within the despair. It's still, you know, so who knows why this, how this, how this whole thing works. And it's the greatest mystery. And yeah. Yeah. That's part of the miracle. That's it. It's the greatest mystery to be lived. Yeah. It's not a problem to be solved. It's a mystery to be lived. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can have all these ideas of reincarnation and different platitudes that we throw at it but at the yeah. end of the day it's yeah. truly a mystery to be lived and this is what makes it so beautiful yeah living i the wouldn't mystery. want to figure it out right no i'd be like yeah. that's an end of the show when you figure yeah. out the ending the ending <laughs> it's like no you don't want that <sighs> yeah it's like um i feel as though this vantage point, you could say, the conscious perspective, it's an enhancement overall of the experience moment to moment. It just makes life better, right? To put it in maybe simple terms, seeing this, it really does um, shine oneself into the miracle. Like you, you, you just really feel, not only feel it, but you feel a part of it, man. And, mm -hmm. um, I think that's what it's all about is actually truly 
enjoying life. But part of that is understanding that you're really never going to figure it out. And that's yeah. freedom. Yeah. Man, that's true freedom. That's like yeah. weight off of your shoulders. It's, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Nobody else knows what's going on, but <laughs> let's keep it going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, um, not to need to know. Yeah. Cause I think the mind consciously or unconsciously always needs to know something, some kind yeah. of concreteness. Like this is who I yeah. am. This is what I'm doing. This is who we are and what we're doing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's all illusion. It's all fallacy. Yeah. Living from not knowing is, is great freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Socrates figured that one out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, all the sages figure that out in one way or the other. Living from not knowing. Mm. Yeah. It seems counterintuitive. The scariest thing for the ego. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. It seems counterintuitive to the mind, right? Why would you not want to know? But. It's like, do you want to live an illusion of knowing or the truth of not knowing, <laughs> right? Yeah. So what has your path been? That's a tough one to answer. I never know how to answer that. What has it been? I don't know. I don't know. What got, <laughs> what got you onto this um, path without the path? <laughs> the pathless path, yeah. Uh, overall, just mental illness that mm -hmm. you know depression anxiety that drove yeah. me toward modalities of exercise that eventually drove me into doing asana yoga that eventually drove me into really what yoga was mm. and meditation and the whole like of that so it started from just self-development self-improvement and then through that self-development i realized what the self was was something <laughs> totally different than what I was led to believe. The capital yeah. S self. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, There's no suffering. improvement on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, to sum it up in basic terms, just general mental illness, yeah, mental it's suffering. It's beautiful that you share that. It's beautiful because, you know, whoever might get to see this or hear this, it's, it's quite possible that that's... Um, an experience for them now or has been or and that that's really inspiring because we didn't you know i didn't i didn't get to wherever i am and i don't know where that is um without go, really going through it yeah, you know yeah. really be taken through the the depths of despair actually yeah mm. But you probably wouldn't want it any other way, right? Oh no, there's nothing to change. It's it had to be, and it, and it and it gives depth. It brings depth. Yeah. Because you know, I see people who also have recognized this and and speak lots of the words, but the depth is not yet there. Um, it, it feels like, and mm. you know, I always feel like, oh, okay just have to go through a few things because yes this truth is beautiful to speak and yet how does that stand in the face of really great human challenge yeah and unless you've really been there and can continue to go there um the speaking doesn't come with depth mm. yeah just kind of parroting without the depth yeah it's like getting the understanding and getting that there's nobody here and there's no separation and only that exists and that are, which is all true yet it's it's still a superficial um message if it doesn't have deep understanding of the human journey you know it really doesn't matter where somebody is in this journey where, whether they feel like they are like far away or like really feel lost or they're far away from recognizing this or they've tried and tried self-inquiry and still they're just stuck in all this stuff and they feel they've got lots and lots of work to do and they've got problems da, da, da. it doesn't matter what your experience is it doesn't matter where you think you are right 
in the heart of this, right in the heart of this moment, freedom is already here. And it can be found right in the heart of this moment, no matter how it is. And even though that may mm, could use a little assistance, pointing, um, you know, someone to be present with or for or whatever, it's not dependent on. But even though that might, it still, I mean, it can be from a video on YouTube, it can be from uh, a book, it can be from anything, it doesn't need to be a live person. But um, don't think that you are outside of freedom, because freedom is already at the heart of your being. Oh, by the way, I have a retreat running in uh, Portugal called Into the Heart of Being. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's in November 21st to 26. Okay. Um, and yeah, so that's basically, <laughs> that came together like that, but it wasn't the, <laughs> wasn't, um, but yeah, it's in your being because no matter who you are, no matter what's happened to you, no matter what, 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 your being, you came here as a free being and that hasn't gone anywhere and it's your birthright to recognize and realize the being of you is, there's no question of being good enough or not. You are that already. It's not an achievement. Even close is too far away. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm. So I just want to, like, you, you are not outside of this. It's already who you are, and it's just a shift of perspective. Right? A conscious perspective. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Here and now. Into the heart of being. Yeah. Mm, wonderful. Well, yeah, I don't know any better way to wrap it up. I thank you so much for coming on here, Ananta. This was um, amazing. You are a very special being, very warm, slightly intense, but good <laughs> in a good way. So I thank appreciate you. that. And I appreciate your energy and just, yeah, your spirit altogether. So I really thank you for coming on here today. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And also, um, I'd like to, if uh, anybody would like to look at my work, they can find hundreds of videos on YouTube and find me that way. Awesome. If they would like, yeah. I'll put everything down in the description for everybody to check out and all yeah, your stuff. Thank you. But um, yeah. Thank it's you again. been a pleasure. It's for been sure. a pleasure. Yeah. For sure. The pleasure is mine. And um, yeah, I thank anybody that listened this long as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> peace and love to you and peace and love to the listener. Mm, thank you. Namaste. Yeah. Namaste.